geez, since the beginning. And so I guess like two years, I think we started in October or September. I think it was, no, actually I think it was August. It was August of 2018. So we've got 35 agents on the team and we've got uh, roughly 100,000 leads on the database. Great, great. And how have you been able to build up those leads? I mean, where are the sort of main lead sources coming from? And yeah, so primarily, um, we've been uh, big with uh, Zillow since 2010. So we've got a ton of leads from Zillow that's in that database. Um, Realtor.com, and then we bought a bunch of uh, bunch of Wilopo leads uh, over the last uh, year, year and a half as well. Okay. The primary, primary ones in there are going to be Zillow and Realtor.com. What we're using it for primarily is more of lead conversion, retargeting, that kind of thing. And it's worked really, really well for that. Um, I can say anecdotally, what we saw when we started investing heavily in retargeting is we saw our conversion rate on our Zillow leads, for example, increase pretty dramatically. Um, in 2018, we were running with a right at about a 3% conversion rate on our Zillow leads. Um, 2019, we were at a 4.2% conversion rate. Now, there were some other things that changed. I can't say all of that was wide open. Uh, there were some other things that changed, but um, I, looking at that, I have to say that I, I would say a significant portion of that was wide open. And it's it's hard. It's it's hard to to um, to allocate specifically that somebody was re-engaged with wide Lopo or they saw a listing alert and then they called us and we have them tagged as a Zillow So I have a feeling we have a lot of, of conversion that's due directly to Wilopo that we don't actually track it because it's being tracked under another lead source. The two things that people generally think of when they think of Wilopo is lead gen and, um, and retargeting. Um, those are the two big things that I think most people are, uh, most people think of. You know, if, if, if your needs are, you need a bunch of, of leads, inexpensive leads, you want to get them into the database and just let the system work, I highly recommend using you guys for lead generation. Um, if you're trying to build up a database, that's a great way to get a ton of names in the database and then just let Raya work. Let Raya do her thing. Um, if, you're, if you've already got a bunch of leads in your database, and you need um, a system for going back in and essentially retouching all of those leads. That's what kind of the way we use it. So you take all of those leads, you essentially tag each one of them for Raya to send out a, a new listing alert. So you get new listing alerts set up for 100% of those leads in your database. And then again, Raya is looking at them as though they're a brand new lead. So Raya is working them um, just like normal. So it, it depends on the type of lead, um, but primarily let's, let's call it a Zillow lead. Um, a lead comes in, uh, we, we use a, an agent on duty model where um, at any given time, we have two to three agents that are manning the phones during a 24 hour period from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. So they're getting all the leads that come in during that time, whether they're concierge call leads or transfer phone leads, um, internet leads, whatever, sign calls, all that stuff, they all go to those agents. Um, and then they're responsible in the beginning for that upfront follow-up. They're, you know, it's of course we use the track back that we use phone call, text, email, just like everybody. Um, and that all goes out through follow-up boss. A lot of that's done through uh, via follow-up boss. Then after that, of course, all of our leads are then um, all of them receive a, you know, they go into the Y Lopo uh, churn essentially, and they receive um, the. Um, listing alerts and start going. So listing alerts start going out to them. Um, and Raya is working her thing with them. Uh, that's kind of the big thing for us is that's where I think the biggest benefit for us has been Raya um, working those leads for us. I almost look at Raya as a virtual ISA, um, which is something I was looking at for a long time before I found you guys. Uh, but it's kind of a virtual ISA. So Raya is working, she's doing the follow up, but our agents are also doing the follow up. So um, you know, on a, you know, a typical cadence, uh, you know, we, 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 we call, we text, we email, um, within, you know, just a few seconds of the lead coming in. Um, we, um, we, um, uh, and then in, in subsequent days we're, we're calling, we're texting, we're emailing. Um, and again, a lot of it is, is automated, but the agents are still responsible for, for doing all of their own work.
No, we jump in. Um, well, I, honestly, it depends on how the conversation is going. Um, and I, I'll speak specifically for myself because I still have a ton of leads that are under my name. So a lot of times when I see Raya start to engage, I just kind of watch and see where she goes with it. Because in the end, I personally don't want to talk to a lot of the leads. I'd rather, once Raya gets going with it, I'd rather turn it over to one of my agents and let one of my agents work it. So I tend to be a little, um, a little laid back and watch to see how Raya works. But, and, and it's gotten a lot better, but in some of the early days conversations, the conversations would go really off track and I would jump in pretty quickly with those. Um, now what I'll do is I'll kind of watch to see how Raya does. Um, and if I feel like the person is asking a question that really should be answered by an agent, I'll jump in on it. Uh, but I like to, she, Raya just, I mean, honestly, the system does a really, really good job at responses and it looks really authentic. If I ever feel like it's not authentic or I feel like the person on the other side thinks that it's a, um, uh, a bot, then I will jump in and then it surprises them. But most of the time, quite honestly, she does a really good job without us having to do it. Now, my agents, typically, when they see Raya engage, they will jump in pretty quickly uh, because they want to they manage the conversation. But I, I look at it a little different. Have. I mean, end of the day, with the number of leads that we have, our agents simply cannot follow up with everybody all the time. It's just never going to happen. I would love to think it's going to happen. Um, it didn't happen when, when I was the one that was following up with my leads. Um, so adding Raya in and, and having, having Wailoko do the retargeting just adds that virtual ISA component that we've been missing. I, I used to run an ISA model. Um, I don't anymore. Um, my thought process for the longest time was that there has to be um, software available that will do 80% of what a human does as an ISA. And if I can get to an 80% effectiveness of a human ISA with essentially zero cost, then it makes total sense for me to do that. And that's what Y Lopo did for us. It basically said, okay, now I've got somebody that's doing that follow-up for me, um, and 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 it doesn't cost. I mean, it costs me, you know, uh, a little bit for for what my remarketing budget is each month, but it's really nothing compared to what it would be to have an entire team of ISAs doing nothing but following up on all of my old leads. I don't think that it's as effective as a team of human ISAs, but I think in, it's probably about eighty percent as effective at zero cost, at literally a tenth of the cost, if anything. Um, we're probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about a thousand. Wow. And that's just, I mean, that's completely off the top of my head. That's not looking it up. So I'm not, I can't say that with, with any, any definitive answer, but I'd say we're getting about a thousand a month. Um, and those, um, those are going, if a lot of those leads we've taken out of an agent's queue, and we put them into one general queue. And then as the listing alerts uh, pop up, we're then assigning it to an agent. And the great thing is the agent looks at that as a brand new lead at that point because they've never got it before. This is a lead that we may have received three years ago. Um, and they just started rearing their head again. We've got a priority alert. We then assign it to the agent. They treat it as a, as a brand new lead, which is pretty cool. We do listing rockets. Uh, we do a listing rocket on every single listing that we do. So whenever a, um, a listing comes in, a new listing comes in, um, we automatically start up a, uh, a new listing rocket. And we were doing the dynamic uh, uh, revolving ads, uh, but we started doing the diva ads now, uh, which is which is pretty cool. Our, our agents really like this. Um, we tend to get really good engagement with them, and we're averaging. It looks like about two to three leads. Per, um, per about $75 that we spend. So it's, it's actually a pretty good um, cost per lead for those leads that we're getting off of our own listings. That, that I, there was a big piece that we were missing in our follow-up. Um, you know, we've, we've had lead alerts in the past time, listing alerts in the, in the, in, in the past. Um, but what I figured out is that we weren't as good with the follow-up as I thought we were. Um, and it shows because there's times when, say, Raya will 
re-engage somebody and I go back in and, and I'm looking at the conversation and I'm looking and the only person that has talked to them, you know, in 30 days has been Raya. And there's been cases where Raya has carried on a conversation with somebody for, for literally 30 days before we even realize it. Now that's, you know, that's atypical. That doesn't always happen. We're, we're typically on it pretty well. But we do have those occasions where one will slip through and Raya has engaged for like 30 days. So I'd say there were some, some, some ahas for me when I realized that, um, you know, our follow-up wasn't as, as, as uh, solid as I would like for it to have been, although it wasn't bad. Um, but Raya has added another dimension that we just don't have. I mean, we, we do, we work off smart lists. I've got a lead manager that, that manages all of those. So she's constantly in there watching what's going on. Um, that's why we can, that's why we can, we can take leads out of the agents databases and put them in one central like pool database. And then as lead alerts come up, um, or, or priority uh, alerts come up, she can then reassign it because she's in there all the time watching it. So we do smart list, but smart list for, for our lead manager to, to pay close attention to it.